Hey y'all! So I know it's been a while since I've done a garden tour. I'm just in that space where I'm like, nothing looks good. Because this is our first year in the house, I feel like things are very unfinished. And you know, we're trial and erroring a couple of things. But today I'm gonna show you around and let you see what's going on here in August. So let's go. So here's where I have my veggie garden. As you can see, the cucumber is climbing, but extremely slow. <gasps> oh, I forgot about this. Hold please while I come to my senses and search frantically for a hair tie. This is a little straight eight cucumber. So like I was saying, the cucumbers and the watermelon obviously didn't make it over this trellis. I thought it was gonna look really whimsical and beautiful, but they just, they've been really slow here. And I think I attribute that to kind of planting in the ground. I did try to amend the soil as much as I could, but it was kind of in the middle of a pandemic. And you know, we, our raised beds weren't ready. So, you know, this was definitely a trial and error year for that. Ooh, maybe need two hands. Should have brought a basket out. What was I thinking? All right, let's see. Still could use a little bit more time. We've got a homestead heirloom tomato, a green zebra tomato, and a black crim tomato here. The rest of it is just a hodgepodge of failures. <laughs> oh, something really cool to show you. In this little bag here, I have a little butternut squash, which actually looks like it's finished, but I don't know. I'm a little... I'm a little skeptical. This is the butter bush um, from Burpee. I have one. Yeah, it's still got a little bit of green veining at the top, so I'm gonna leave it go. And it's so small and cute. Now this bed here has kind of just turned into a hodgepodge of whatever I have at the moment. So some of the tomatoes that I was propagating ended up in here and they're doing pretty well. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen I found a giant hornworm on this tomato back here. It was the nastiest thing I've ever seen in my life. But I digress. Now here is a California wonder pepper all bagged up. Look at this beaut. It's turning a little bit I think already. You can kind of see it's turning, it's wanting to turn red. This is a house plant that I wanted to save and then it started upsetting me and dying. So I put it over here and now it's growing new leaves. So I don't know. So I have really enjoyed watching the pollinators buzzing in and out of these sunflowers here. You can see the lemon queen sunflowers in the front. They're a little bit shorter. They have multiple heads though. You can see, oh, I don't want to bother the bees though. You can see how pretty they are. Darker on the inside, lighter on the outside there. The lemon queen sunflowers are branching sunflowers. So they have multiple heads. This mammoth sunflower in the back that lost its head that's done for. The mammoth sunflower gives off one giant flower and that's it. So unfortunately, that one has bit the dust. I just wanna show you our pink pathway and a few other things in the backyard garden. Come on. I do love how these uh, polka dot plants shot right up there. It's a really nice look. The impatience didn't do as well as I thought they would, but I think it's because a lot of the water runs here. Um, I've got some hostas way back there that you cannot see under the hydrangea bush. These hydrangeas gave off this beautiful blue color earlier in the season. I bet I could even find one that's still blue if I really get back here. It's not the deepest of blue as it was this summer, but, well, it's still summer, but earlier in the season. But look at these hydrangeas changing color. Is this not gorgeous? This pretty green and pink, this pale coloring, look at, I think it's when the sun hits it, honestly, as it's aging and they're starting to dry a bit, these are gonna be so beautiful in fall arrangements. So here in our pink pathway, we're seeing some new life in the flowers and we're also seeing some that are ready to go. But you know what is thriving? These caladiums. These caladiums are so gorgeous. I just love the facing on them. Amazing, I'm so happy with that. You can see we have a few more begonias here and the caladiums continue. These geraniums have been beautiful. They're this pink, salmon color. 
um, that really catch my eye when I'm walking down the path here. The purple print zinnias are starting to experience a little bit of powdery mildew down here, which is covered up lovely by my Super Chunia Vista Bubblegum by Proven Winners. <laughs> but I do need to either treat that or probably pull them out. But look at these zinnias, they are just gorgeous. Now, if you watched my most recent video, um, I have just talked to you about how I fertilize these plantings with Proven Winners water soluble food. That and a weekly spray of BT and these plants just took right off. Um, they struggled a little bit in the beginning to get established just because our soil here is not great but eventually they really pulled out for me and I'm so happy about that. Some more zinnias and this is a prime example of what the gladiolus looks like when it's blooming. Just gorgeous. So one last thing I'm gonna show you really briefly where I have a bunch of squash planted and um, oh, I forgot one more thing. Over here, I have some bee balm that um, Soil and Margarita sent me. This is the Pardon Me Purple Bee Balm. <laughs> some vines. Um, this dahlia. When people say stake up your dahlias, like now I understand. It got so heavy that I needed to come out in the rain and stake it. But if you can see this bloom back there, it's so big and pretty. And I think I wanna bring that inside for an arrangement. Now here we have the pink hybrid tomato. I told you I really come out here and wrap my, <laughs> my produce because if you don't, oh, look at that color, look at that. That is insane, that color, oh my goodness. And now I will show you where, I'm, where I put all my squash. Yep, we got a green zebra tomato ready. My goodness, my goodness. Look at this color. So over here is where I planted all of my squash and they are just sickly and failing. Um, <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it. So um, this is my paper bark maple that I brought from Brooklyn. I have it underplanted with these coleus that I started from seed. Makes me so happy to see them thriving and doing so well. Um, and I did put some uh, impatience underneath here. They seem to not be not be thriving, but they're not dying. So, you know, what can you really ask for? Um, this vining powdery mildew mess right here is a spaghetti squash. Do not believe I'm getting spaghetti squash off of it. We've got a nice little patch of zinnias right here that I'm really, really happy with. And then right behind those zinnias, we've got a giant acorn squash that's also starting to fill up with powdery mildew. I didn't even realize I had some acorn squash down here, so I'm actually really excited about that. Not really such a mess, is it? Oh, and more. Look at that. How cool is this? Oh, gosh. Okay. So that's it for my August garden tour today. There is so much that I want to change for next year, and I really think that this year was an okay time to take, to learn, to experiment, and I am getting some produce, so I'm really happy about that. We have some exciting things coming up about our current vegetable garden here really soon. So I can't wait to share that. But until then, see you in my next one. Bye.